In this in-depth comparison, we pit two heavyweight contenders against each other, in the battle for the presence detection supremacy. On one side we have the Highlink LD2450, a sensor that promises lightning fast detection and precision. And on the other side the Akara FP2, known for its sleek design and reliable performance. And if you're ready, let's go! First, let's start by looking at some specs. The LD2450 only possesses Bluetooth connection, but pairing it up with an ESP32 board will allow us to easily connect it to Home Assistant. The Akara FP2 has Wi-Fi connection, and we can pair it to our network using the Akara app. I added a PAR sensor just for perspective. Now, for the sensor, the LD2450 uses a 24GHz sensor, and the Akara FP2 uses a 60GHz one. I know that you might think that the bigger the number, the better the sensor, but that's not really the case here. They are just using different wave sizes. Now, for the detection range, we have 6 meters for the LD2450 and 9 meters for the Akara FP2. In detection angle is where we have our biggest difference. We have 60 degrees to the LD2450 and 120 degrees for the Akara FP2. Now, in sound detection, the LD2450 supports up to 3 sounds, while the Akara FP2 supports up to 5. And both sensors support person tracking with multiple person detection, up to 3 for the LD2450 and up to 10 for the Akara FP2. Yeah, you heard me right, 10. When it comes to person tracking, they are not playing. Now, since this is an automation channel, I set up an automated testing setup. For this, I used a modified version of the excellent stopwatch created by Miguel Pusela to automate the data collection for our test, to ensure that we get the exact values every time. Now, let's analyze the results. The test will be measuring the response time of the sensors under different scenarios, so we can have an overview of the overall performance of each sensor by the end. For each category, we perform the set of tests twice, changing the distance from where the object approaches the sensor, one from close and one from far. On our first test, we are trying to measure the time that takes the sensor to react to our presence when we approach it from close distance. On this test, the Akara FP2 is the clear winner, with an average of 1.7 seconds. The LD2450 is not far behind, with an average of 2.2 seconds. And the PR sensor, for reference, sits between them with an average of 2 seconds. Now, interesting enough, on the far version of the test, the LD2450 takes the lead, with the fastest detection time of 1.2 seconds. The Akara FP2 drops to an average of 3.6 seconds, and the PAR sensor with an average of 5 seconds. One thing clear from this is that the m wave radar sensor technology has come a long way in the recent years. This says the detection time is sliding fast, just like a PR sensor. Now, moving on to the cooldown time category, we found here an interesting case that showcases one of the key differences between the LD2450 and the Akara FP2. It's all about the algorithm. On the cooldown time from close, the LD2450 gets an average of 27.1 seconds while the Akara FP2 gets an average of 38.3 seconds. And let's just ignore the PR sensor. It's not even close, with an average of 83.6 seconds. Now, if you scroll down, let me give you the stats of this test to get that out of the way. The LD2450 gets an average of 7.5 seconds, while the Akara FP2 gets an average of 23.4 seconds. The PR sensor is the slowest with an average of 80.6 seconds. Now here, the LD2450 is the clear winner, with the fastest cooldown time, but that's not the whole history here. We are going to talk more about this later when we get to the person tracking feature, but if we take a closer look to the data, we can see that the actual cooldown time should be around 3.5 seconds. But what is happening here is that the person tracking algorithm of the Akara FP2 tries to minimize the false negatives having a cooldown time of around 30 seconds when it suspects a person might still be in the room, but is not being able to detect it thus the higher average. The LD2450 algorithm, on the other hand, is more permissive, but it's still there. You can actually see it in action during the last two readings of the closed cooldown time test. Now, moving on to the steel detection category. For this test, I only collected a single reading per test, since it required to be in the room for 10 minutes without moving. But the results align with what we talk about in the cooldown time section. We can see the effects of the more strict person tracking algorithm of the Akara FP2 in action here. The Akara FP2 was the only sensor that was able to detect me the whole 10 minutes. From close, the LD2450 failed after 3 minutes. It did pick me up again after 20 seconds and didn't lose me for the rest of the test. Now, if you scroll down, we can see the same pattern. The LD2450 almost made it through this time, 
failing at the last 14 seconds, while the Akara FP2 was able to detect me the whole 10 minutes. With this, I'm not saying that the Akara FP2 detection is bulletproof. I know that I can make it fail if I try hard enough, but this helps us understand the strengths and limitations of this technology. Since we are now working with an algorithm that has to calculate the position of a person by analyzing the angles and speed of sound waves that bounce back from the person to the sensor. It's not perfect and it's not going to be perfect for a while, yet it offers so many advantages over peer technology that it's worth the trade-off. We just need to be aware of the limitations to work around them. Now let's move on onto sound detection. First, let's remember the specs a little bit. Here we have a 24 GHz radar sensor with a detection range of 6 meters and a detection angle of 60 degrees. Here we have a unique take on sound detection. The LD2450 allows you to set up to 3 sounds and we can choose 3 different types. The first one is disabled. While I was editing the video, I discovered that if you have sounds configured, you can set the sound type to disabled and it will detect sound movement in the sounds and outside them. I was confused because if you set sound type to disabled using the Hidelink app, it will erase all the sounds configured. So a workaround for this, if you want to use the app to configure the sounds, will be to select sound type to detection in the app and then change the setting to disabled in Home Assistant. The second one is detection. That will make the sensor only detect movement within the configured zones. Filter is the opposite of detection. It allows you to set what on the Akara FP2 will be the interference zones. So we can use it to purposely ignore zones to prevent the sensor to get triggered by mistake. Sadly, we can't mix sound types. Now, for the Akara FP2, we have a 60 GHz sensor with a 9 meter range and a 120 degrees detection angle. We can tell that the Akara FP2 has a superior sensor, with a longer and wider field of view and a full set of features built into its app. We can set up to 5 detection zones, plus interference, exits and entrance zones. That allow us to help its person tracking algorithm to understand the room better and increase the detection accuracy. It's not perfect though. For example, I set it exits and entrance zones to improve its cooldown time. Yet, as you can see on the data from the cooldown test, most of the time it still chooses to wait at least 30 seconds to be sure I am not longer in the room. As we talked about earlier, we are working with a complex algorithm. That is next level technology. But it's not perfect and it's not going to be perfect for a while. Yet, it's evolving to be more reliable and already allow us to cover more automation scenarios. With either of them, song mapping is kind of a pain, since we can only draw rectangles but we cannot rotate them. So we have to play around with the sensor position to get the songs right. Now, let's move on onto person tracking. This is perhaps the more interesting part of the comparison, since this is the key feature that will complete the sound detection to give us that almost instant reaction to our presence that we love and expect from our automations. Again, starting with the specs, the LD2450 can track up to 3 people at the same time and it's able to detect the direction of their movement. But here is where the more permissive person tracking algorithm shows its tail. When multiple people are detected in close proximity, the sensor often becomes confused and fails to track them accurately. It just interprets them as a single person, jumping around back and forth. So person count is not reliable enough to be used as a trigger for automations. But you can still use sound detection reliably to trigger automations. If you use the sensor to turn on or off some light, you can set a time delay to account for person detection error in these scenarios. Personally, I use the person detection feature combined with my PC sensors to trigger the test light. So I really don't have any issues with this. By the time I'm close enough to the desk, the light is already on. Even if the sensor fails due to someone else being in the room, the PC is already active, so the light stays on. And on the other hand, we have the Akara FP2 with support for up to 10 people at the same time and a more strict person tracking algorithm that allows you to track people more accurately even when they are close together. While the LD2450 more permissive nature exposes it to more false negatives, the Akara FP2 more strict one makes it more susceptible to false positives. Like in this case, where the sensor is supporting 6 people on my living room when there are actually only 2 present. This is to show that any approach has its own limitations. We just need to choose the behavior that fits better to our automation needs. Now, let's talk about the Home Assistant integration. To be clear, the LD2450 is not connected directly to Home Assistant. I am using my Ultimate ESP Home Sensor to connect it to Home Assistant. The Akara FP2 on the other hand is directly integrated to Home Assistant using the HomeKit integration. 
Both of them are really easy to integrate and use. The main difference is the amount of information that they expose to Home Assistant. The LD2450 being an ESP Home sensor allows me to customize the data I want to expose to Home Assistant, while the Akara FP2 basically only exposes binary sensors for each zone. That's why we can have a map for the LD2450 on our dashboard, but not one for the Akara FP2. There are some automations I can only do with the LD2450 because of the data it exposes, but just potential is not enough if you end up not using it. So, who takes the crown, you might ask? Well, it's not that simple. Both sensors have their strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to you to decide which one fits better to your use case. If you still want me to declare a winner, I have to say that the Kara FP2 is still overall a better fit for most users. But the LD2450 is a great sensor, and it's a great alternative if you're looking for a more customizable solution. That also offers almost instant detection. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Ko-fi or on Patreon, like all these amazing people. I really couldn't do it without you. Your support really means the world to me. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!